everybody, Richard again here from Rachel Classic Cars, and on this week's episode, it's one of the most beautiful Porsches ever built, the Porsche 356. Let's get into it. Now, let's give you a little bit of a tour around the car first. So, specifically, this is a Porsche 356 A. This was the first mass-produced Porsche, if you like. There was a, a pre-A, which had a kind of a split window in the front, which is very rare. But this is a 356 A from the 1950s. This is a 1958 model. And it's in that silver, which is the iconic color that I love Porsche 356s to be in. But this is the, I mean, there's no bad angle on a 356 but for me I just love the rear end of a 356 the the grill there for the air-cooled engine that was originally in it and these just iconic lights here I just love the chrome accenting the color and the overall aerodynamic shape of a 356 now we did a replica a few years ago in fact it's pretty many years ago now maybe five or six years ago but this is a real one. Now, when we did that 356 Speedster replica, a number of people said, oh, you put far too much weight in the rear because look at the rear, it's dragging on the floor. But on the 356, there's a optical illusion going on really, because if you look at the height of this wheel arch here and this wheel arch here, this one's a lot lower down. So it looks like the wheel is really tucked under, under a load of weight. But actually, if you look at this line here, and compare that to the road below this is exactly level to the road on probably one of the few flat pieces of road you can find in mid wales now it's time to talk electrics because obviously this is no ordinary petrol powered porsche 356 it's been converted to electric otherwise why would it be on our channel and originally this had a 1600 engine in that was the most popular engine or most common engine in the 356A, which was 356A was from 1955 to 59. But uh, how much power is the 1600 engine? Can you remember? 50, I think it was 50 something horsepower, wasn't it? I'm going to say 57 nope. horsepower. No more than 60. On a good day. On a good day, <laughs> if you were lucky, yeah. So it was a kind of an evolution of the Beetle engine, if you like, at the time. But the Beetle engine at the time was only 1200cc. So a 1600 engine, flat four air cooled engine used to sit in there, which is why we got the grill there to help get the cooling to the engine. And then the exhaust pipes used to come out, in fact, Look at that. Exhaust pipes <laughs> used to come out underneath or through the bumper on the overriders. Urgh, that's a mess. Right, so what have we got in here? A little bit cleaner than what used to come out of here now. So what we've got is a Hyper 9 motor underneath attached to the original gearbox. So that means we've got gears and more on that later when we go for a spin I'll kind of try to explain how all that works. And then we've got a a uh, 30 kilowatt hour battery pack in here. So that is uh, two thirds of it. And uh, now let's think about this. So there's five battery modules. Three of them are in the rear and two of them are in the front. And over this uh, battery box, if you like, we've got a nice cover because, you know, it's got to look right, isn't it? You know, we've got to have a bit of shininess inside here. So we've got inside here a cover over the battery box and some orange high voltage cables and the charge socket. Now, you might be wondering why is that there and not elsewhere externally on the cars because there's no external fuel cap on a 356. So it's got to go in there so you've got a seven kilowatt type 2 charger in there and three of those battery modules in there with a hyper 9 underneath so let's have a look at the front now in the front we've got the rest of the battery pack so anybody that's had an old Porsche or Beetle will know that's where the petrol tank used to go with your filler coming out there so you'd have to open up the front to fill it and Again, anybody that had or has a Beetle or old Porsche will know that if you put anything in there, you will expect it to stink of petrol by the time it comes out. <laughs> but that's not the case anymore because now we've got our other two battery modules in the battery box underneath there. And we've got a nice polished aluminium cover over the top just to fit in with the rest of the chrome work and shininess of the car because having a boring black battery box in there or a carbon fiber top one just isn't going to look right so there's the rest of your batteries there still got some luggage space it's a little bit bigger than the original petrol tank not by much so you've still got some luggage space in there and your charge cable here but you've also kept the spare wheel so people always 
get griped, if you like, when we replace the spare wheel with a battery box on some of our conversions. But you guys can sleep soundly tonight because we've left it in there for you. Now there's one more thing I want to have a quick chat about before we go into the interior and that is this thing here. This is the central jacking point of the car and this is on all old VWs and Porsche classic cars I've had in my lifetime. I don't know if there are any, any other classic Got cars. Got one on the Lotus, not, not a jacking point like that but there's a pad underneath oh, so it shows okay. you exactly where the centre of the car so is. So your Lotus Elise has got one and yeah. I bet it's really central. Exactly. So. Comments below, any other classic cars that have a single central jacking point like that? Because this is a really good indication as to how well balanced the car is. Because an old racing car driver told me many decades ago something that's always stuck in my head, and that is that a human's balance is in his ears. And if you want a really good driving car, you want the balance of the car to be an extension of your balance as a human. So if you think your ears are going to be around about here, and you come down, down, and that is in the same place that will mean that this is going to be a really good balanced car to drive on the road now quickly before I put this back on the jacking point you're probably wondering what is it is it just a cover no actually it doubles as a hubcap removal tool so you just put it in there give that tug and then the hubcap comes off now, when you're driving in along, everybody's admiring the outside of the car, but really for you as a driver, the interior is really important. And this car does not let you down in that respect. Have a look at that interior, it's beautiful. So, interior wise, we've got these lovely bucket seats that now just hold you in place because we found the original seats, you'd be sliding off them like this and holding onto the steering wheel as you go around the corners because obviously it's got a bit more power, better handling now. Uh, talking about steering wheel, lovely wood rim steering wheel here with a uh, Porsche horn push and the horn in the middle there. But the rest of the interior, uh, you know, it's all in keeping with what it kind of used to look like back in the day but obviously it's been retrimmed lovely carpet there some pockets here we've got some speakers there the chrome grill around because we've got a fairly modern although it doesn't look like it, a fairly modern stereo system here which has got bluetooth in it hands-free as a little microphone here for instance but there's little touches that i love in old cars like this for instance you know there's foot controls not just you know accelerate brake and clutch but obviously you've got a uh, headlight dip switch there you've got a windscreen washer button there you don't get that in modern cars you know any modern cars that have foot controls like that no modern yeah. cars don't even have hand controls do they exactly it's just one automatic. big touch screen yeah, here touch really screen. isn't it so uh, you know we've got grab handles there i just we'll love that well you'll need, need the grab it. handle you'll yeah. need it right later in fact i think that's pretty much it in the interior right so pack the camera away get ready to hold on to that grab handle let's go for a spin let's go Okay, so for those that aren't familiar with how a manual gearbox works with an electric motor, let me demonstrate, because we're coming up to a roundabout here, I'm in, what's that, third, so all you do, just like you do in a normal car, tip the clutch, down it the second, that's it, it's exactly the same when you're coming up to junctions and roundabouts like this. The motor's got to be in its power band, if you like, and we've sized the motor here accordingly for this car, uh, also to the rev range as well, because the maximum revs of a Hyper 9 is, you know, realistically around about 6,000 RPM, let's say, which is pretty much around about the same as the original engine. So when you're going up here like this, you'll hear the motor and the kind of the drivetrain in general kind of like starting to get higher in the RPM and then you need to change gear so you still hear the motor you can hear the motor can't you yeah yeah I can hear it so you see what I mean as soon as I start flooring it like this you can hear it can't you yeah so yeah. And, and even if you, you can't can hear, hear the revs it, on it can't you you can, you've got your rev counter down here anyway yeah. so we've made the rev counter work off the signal of the motor so it's exactly the same you just change gear when you need to so I'm going to a hairpin bend here, so I'm just going to change down into second and hit the apex, floor it. But I like the manual electrics that we do because it, it keeps the engagement of the classic car. 
I mean, there's nothing wrong with having direct drive. There's a lot of benefits to having direct drive. Number one is you can really go crazy with the power, as you guys will probably know if you've watched any of my videos. Because one thing you can't go with this when you're attaching an electric motor to the original gearbox of a 356 is put stupid amounts of power in because the gearbox ain't gonna last very long. So the Hyper 9 itself is 120 horsepower max and you know it's as long as you treat it respectfully it'll look after that gearbox. Obviously you can't put it in first gear and floor it and expect it to last very long but that's the same with a higher power uh, like a petrol engine anyway. So I'm in third gear here now, and if I start to... Yeah, and you're accelerating up a hill now, so you'd struggle to do that with the original engine. Got good handling as well. I mean, we've upgraded certain bits and pieces to make it handle better than the original. So, for instance, we've got 5.5-inch uh, wide uh, wheels on it, so it's slightly wider wheels, slightly um, lower-profile tyres. We've put a heavy duty anti roll bar on the front. Yeah. So that's why going around these S, S's here and these curves, it's yeah, pretty performant, as they like to say. Certainly keeping up with this police van in front. As I say, it's keeping up with modern traffic or a modern police car. But again, I'm coming up to a hairpin here, down into second, throw it in. we go. For a 1950s car, doesn't that, that pretty good. Yeah, it's definitely a driver's car, like most Porsches are. I mean, I say most Porsches, nearly all Porsches are driver's cars. They're built to handle and have fun in. And we've just added to that really with a bit more power, a bit better handling and better brakes. And It's great on these roads. And this car is going to live in Scotland, so very similar roads to this. So there we go. I've really enjoyed having a spin in this today. Tim's itching his head now thinking, can I really afford a 356, <laughs> aren't you? I can't afford a 356, well, I know that one. Let's have a look on eBay later, mate. But I've really enjoyed this car. We've got about two thirds left in the tank, so we're gonna rag it around for the rest of the day. But I think it just leaves us to ask one question. Is there a more pretty Porsche than the 356? Comments below. I'd, I'd say it's number one. I think it, it is. It is the prettiest car, isn't it? And on that note, hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the next one.